Hello and welcome back. Can we really sharpen by blurring first? Let's find out. I came across a method mentioned in the Affinity forums originating from a guy called Dan Margulis. The idea is to blur the image to create light edges and then blur again to create dark images. Once you combine these two, you get a sharper image. Sounds complicated. Well, actually it's not that complicated. Let me demonstrate the method. So here we have our base image. I'm going to start by duplicating this image three times. The next thing we want to do is to create a dark edges group. For this, I will need to move the two images as a child of the top image. Excellent. On the bottom child, we apply the Gaussian blur. A value around 2 is sufficient for now. Before we move on, we will set its blend mode to lighten. On the top child, we only change the blend mode to difference. As a final step for this image, we will add an invert adjustment, so we get a light background with dark edges. To make the edges stronger, we will duplicate this whole group and set the blend mode of the copied group to multiply. And there we have our dark edges. Now it's time for the light edges group. This is in fact the opposite of what we just did. So I will just duplicate this dark edges group and rename it to light edges. In this group, the first thing we need to do is to remove the invert adjustment from the groups. Next is to set the blend mode of the layer with the Gaussian blur to multiply. And the blend mode of the top group will need to be changed from multiply to screen as we want to make the lighter areas stronger. Perfect. To enable the sharpening, we need to move these two groups inside the original and change their blend modes. So what do you think the blend mode of the dark edges should be? Multiply, right? As we want to make the darks stronger, so in a sense sharpening the darks. With the light edges group, we want to make the light stronger, so the blend mode should be screen. Pretty awesome. Let's have a look at the before and the after. The sharpening definitely works. We actually sharpened by blurring. Amazing. Because nothing is destructive, we can go into the blur filters and adjust the settings to make the effect stronger or weaker. Now, I will give you some tips on how to better set up this effect. I will duplicate this whole image. We'll make some changes in the duplicate and we will later compare the end result with where we started from. First, in the edges group, we can remove the duplicated group and replace this with a curves layer. So in the darks group, I will remove the top group and add a curves layer and set its blend mode to multiply. The same action on the light edges group, but the blend mode will now be screen. To make future adjustments easier, I'm going to do a duplicate length of the Gaussian filter from the dark edges group and move it to the top. Let's not forget to name it. Same for the filter in the light edges. As a final step, I will unlink the opacity and the blend range from these layers. This will allow me to hide these filters by lowering the opacity to zero, but still have the possibility to control the effect without drilling and going through all the groups inside. If you want, you can give them a different color. 
so you know that these are control layers, as I did earlier. Pretty cool, right? Now let me hide this layer and see if the end result is exactly the same. Yes, it is. That is pretty awesome. I can remove the lower layer and have a much better organized file now. Besides having a much better organized file, look how easy it is to modify the effect. I don't need to search in the child groups where the parameters of the effect are. A quick note on this method before wrapping up. The blur values should be reasonable. If you blur too much, you get strange coloring and artifacts. This was definitely an interesting video about using Blur to sharpen, but also how to organize your Affinity document in a much better way. I hope you learned some new tricks today. And as always, thanks for watching.